is happening, people? It is Brian Alds with NeverState.com, and today I'm coming back with another instructional video. So, my idea for this, since I got injured, if you guys did not know, I tore my rotator cuff a couple months ago. So, I've been coming back on the bench press. It's pretty much like me starting all over at the beginning. So, what I'm doing, I thought I would give you guys four focuses that I'm really paying attention to to drive up my bench press numbers in hopes that you guys will also be able to use the same cues for your own bench press and get them up there. You should probably get that bench press up a little bit, buddy. But before we get into that, I just wanna say a quick thank you to my buddy Brian Shaw, who was nice enough to send me a little bit of package where he gave me one of these Strongman Academy shirts. I don't know if you guys, you guys probably can't really see that. Anyway. Now strongmanacademy.com is a website run by Brian Shaw where he puts out instructional videos, instructional articles, all kinds like that. It is a pay site, so it is for those of you who have a little bit more money on the side, but you have the four times world strongest man giving you tips instead of me. But I think we all know who the stronger, more handsome Brian is. He also hooked him up with a hat that is just a little bit too big, Brian. I think uh, your idea of how big people's heads are is a little bit skewed. And he also gave me some Elite Tacky, which is the best tacky on the market. If you guys have never, if you guys are in the market for tacky, go to shawstrength.com, pick up some tacky, support people who support you, and plus Brian is one of the nice people I've ever met. He's always super kind to me whenever I'm hanging out with him. So guys, please support him and what he's doing. Which is the perfect segue to my first cue. But it's, but it's not at all. But the first thing we're gonna be talking about is your setup, because if your foundation is weak, then your house is not gonna stand. So it all begins there. So for my setup, there's a couple things that I'm really, really focused on. Number one is getting tight. If you are not tight in your bench press, you are not gonna be benching nearly as much weight as you potentially could do so. So what I like to do is row myself towards the bar to pull my shoulder blades together behind me. Once that is there, I keep them retracted behind me and then I place myself down on the bench on my traps. Now make sure that you are really working your traps into that bench because that is where you're gonna stick with your leg drive. If you're not sitting on top of your traps, then you're gonna slide and if you slide, you're gonna lose all that power, all that kinetic energy and you are going to end up with a bar probably on your neck, face, teeth, nose. Also being up on your traps is gonna give you a much larger arch in your lower back. So the range of motion on the barbell actually shortens. However, since I broke my back twice, I can't get a huge arch. But if you can, I would encourage you to use every single bit of it that you possibly can. Now the last part, for my setup, number one, I'm squeezing that bar as hard as possible. I've said it a million times, but your body works synergistically. If you cannot open a jar, squeeze the jar. Your body is like an electrical circuit. If you are not creating force everywhere that you could potentially create force, which includes squeezing your hands on every single lift, then you're leaving reps out there with unicorns and the ether. And the final point that I really focus on during the setup is to try to bend the bar like a horseshoe. This is gonna do a couple things. Number one, you are not going to be able to not grip that bar hard as you possibly can. And then number two, it's also gonna lock in your lats which is gonna allow you to keep your elbows tucked into the descent, which is what we're going to now. So the descent is not just a terrible horror movie. It is also what you're gonna be doing with the barbell and it's probably the number one place where I see people go wrong. If you have a good setup, a lot of people still continue to want to rush the bench press, but that is not what you're trying to do. You need to remember that you are laying down on the ground. The bench press is the stupidest movement ever. Uh, I mean, everything else makes sense in the hunter-gatherer sense of the word. Like, if you were doing squats, that makes sense. If you're doing deadlifts, that makes sense. Even if you're doing overhead press, that makes sense. But I wanna know who the first idiot was that laid down underneath a log and had another idiot come up to him and put it on top and be like, hey, see if you can push this. It'll be really cool. Which might reveal a little bit about the mind of a teenage boy. But the biggest thing that I want you guys to focus on is controlling that bar on the way down. You wanna lower it as fast as possible, but it needs to be under said control. The two ways I go about this, number one is I focus, I cue rowing the bar to my chest. I do not think about just lowering it. That is a lazy, you are letting the bar control you at that point. You need to be in control of the bar the entire time. The way that I go about that, keeping my elbows bent so that my lats are locked in, and it also allows my elbows to stay tucked on the way down. If your elbows are flared on the way down, number one, that's gonna stick a lot of pressure on your humerus, and you're looking for a shoulder injury, because if your elbows have no place to go when you touch your chest, flaring your elbows is what gets horsepower back in the bar once you get about halfway to three quarters of the way through the bench press. If your elbows are already flared, they have no place to go, they ran out of real estate, and you're gonna do a lot of this. And it's just gonna stop and fall back down your chest, which isn't very impressive to anybody. So in order to remedy that, what I recommend doing is trying to keep your elbows tucked at about a 45 degree angle. You do not want them right next to your side, like on a close grip bench press, and you do not want them flared out like you're a albatross. I don't even know where that one came from. What's an albatross? I don't know. That's exactly why I just made that comment. It's a dog, right? It's a dog? Cat. It's a cat. Cat. 
Yeah, cats bench like this. Don't be a cat. But the basic idea here is that you cannot be passive with a barbell. You need to be active. Rowing it down to your body is going to cue your mind to actually be engaged in the motion. And then number two, you have to lower it under control the entire time. A lot of people try to drop the barbell down super fast thinking that they're getting tired while sitting there holding it. But that's simply not the case. If you drop the barbell down and you dive bomb it, you lose all your tightness and most likely that is not going to end well for you because it doesn't really end well for anyone besides 10 year old people just learning how to bench press where they're not anywhere near their actual potential. For you, what you need to do is control that thing the entire way down. You guys watch world record bench pressers, they bring the bar all the way down, they touch our chest. You need to think about coiling a spring. You're building up kinetic energy. As that bar comes down, you are getting tighter and tighter and tighter and tighter. That spring is getting wound up and wound up and wound up so that when you release it, all that kinetic energy goes at one time, becomes a powder keg, explodes. The bar shoots off your chest, then your elbows flare, you get horsepower back in the motion, Triceps are already strong, so you're gonna lock it out and get a new bench press PR. It works 100% of time for 100% of people. Don't actually look that up. That's looking up's not important. You just need to trust me. Just trust me on that one. All right, so your first point is to fix your setup. So you need to get as tight as possible, guys. If you're not doing all those things that I talked about, that is the first thing you need to fix. Once you are there and you've unracked the bar, you're actively engaging the rowing motion on the coming down. You're controlling it all the way down in active motion. You're not being passive so that you are building up that kinetic energy. And then the third thing is actually because most people bench press with only the top half of their body and that doesn't go well at all. You're probably leaving a good 30, 40 pounds out there somewhere else, but it is not going in your bench press because you're not using your leg drive. So leg drive, arguably one of the most important things in bench pressing. However, leg drive is kind of like dragons. You, you don't see them nearly as much as you think you should. So for years I was always told you need to use leg drive, you need to use leg drive, but I never really knew what it meant and no one explained to me what it was. Now I have entire videos about bench press tutorials, three part series that are literally very, very extensive. So if you guys want to check that out, I'll link that above. And I even have videos just about leg drive that you guys want to check out if you need a little bit more information. However, most of the time what happens to leg drive, what people think that means is push your butt up off the bench and that is the absolute opposite of what you, you want to do. On leg drive, you want to push yourself north on the bench so that your head is sliding towards the barbell, creating kinetic energy traveling all the way up your body into your arms into that bar. Now leg drive takes a very, very long time to learn just because of the timing and the awkwardness. It's kind of like rubbing your stomach and patting your head at the same time. For some people, it takes longer than others. Some people have a little bit more body coordination. They pick it up like this and some people it can take up to years. So what I basically do is this starts in your setup because again, if you're not in your traps, you're not going to be able to apply leg drive. If your feet are in a bad position, you're not going to apply leg drive. But if you are in a good setup, your butt will not come off the bench so you will not get red lighted at a powerlift competition or if you are a high school boy in your bench competition, you won't be shooting your hips up and looking all funny sung underneath that bar like we've all done before sometime in our lives yesterday. But for the timing on your leg drive, what I want you to think is once you are set up, when you are doing step number two, cue number two that I talked about, in the active lowering of that bar, rowing it to your body, your legs are gonna be engaged, pushing your body northward, and it's going to increasingly go up as that bar comes down. So as that bar is lowering, I am putting 60% pressure on my legs, then 70%, 80%, 90%, until it touches my chest. Once it touches my chest, I reverse all of that, my legs drive as hard as possible, 100%, pushing my head towards the top of the bench and that bar will start going up. You actually can use your legs in the bench press and I'm telling you, if you're not doing that, you're leaving a good 30, 40 pounds out there somewhere but is not going into your bench press. If you get this fixed and get the timing down, I guarantee you, your bench will start climbing again in no time. And then the final thing that I'm really focused on for driving up my bench press is my triceps. So in the bench press, in the overhead press, in any type of press, your triceps can never be strong enough. The stronger your triceps, trust me, your bench will start going up but you have to train it correctly. You can't be doing little wussy type of tricep kickbacks and little rope extension push down things. That is not going to get it done. You need to be doing things like pin presses, close grip bench presses, floor presses, things that are going to overload your triceps and force them to adapt to the stimulus that you're putting on it. Doing a little 10 pound tricep kickback probably isn't going to get the work done for a 500 pound bench press. Maybe it will. No, it won't. It definitely won't. Not, not a chance at all. So there you guys go. There are four things that I'm really, really focused at right now. Because like I said, once I tore my rotator cuff, I took a lot of time off benching. So basically all I'm trying to do is figure out the things that are the most conducive to driving on bench press numbers as fast as possible so I can get to back to competition as soon as possible. And I'm really hoping that some of you who are having trouble in the bench press will be able to take some of these cues and apply them to your own training so that you guys can go out and break some bench press PRs. Like I said, guys, I've done entire, like extensive videos on this stuff where it breaks everything down much, much, much more in depth. So if you guys want to check that out, click the links above. But otherwise, guys, I thank you so much for watching this video. I'm glad to be back doing some instructional stuff. If you guys have a suggestion for any videos that you would like to see as far as instructional stuff goes, because to be completely honest, there's like 250 instructional videos on my channel and 
Uh, I'd like to know what you guys want to see because I feel like a lot of it's been covered. But I will be catching up with you guys later in the week, so until I do go out, there's something amazing with us. Keep working on people, be nice to each other. Thank you, Brian Shaw, and I'll see you guys then.